welcome to How to Deal When the Shit Gets Real podcast. I'm Rietta. And I'm Connie. And today we are two crazy cousins here with retired Marine Sergeant John Peck. Connie, I want to know the answer to your one question about how he finagled his way back into the service. So you need to ask that question. So, I mean, she just asked the question. <laughs> so I guess you could just answer. <laughs> It was a lot of uh, back alley deals. Oh my God. (laughs) If only you guys could have seen that. I believe it. Just kidding. (laughs) What? I always knew the military was like that. (laughs) Just kidding. I mean, they are the Department of the Navy. I mean, just kidding. Whoa, whoa, whoa. First off, no. (laughs) Um, no, it was, uh, it was, I did two years. So I got injured in Iraq in uh, 2007. And then I did two years of physical, not really so much physical, it was more of occupational. So occupational therapy at Balaboa in San Diego. And it was a lot of working on speech, um, balance, and then memory issues. And that's basically what my what I was doing for like, you know, almost two years. And then they cleared me off of limited duty, but I was still going to appointments and stuff like that. And then, you know, my, my end of service was coming up and then I eventually just kind of convinced the doctors. I'm like, look, you know, my, my time's coming up. Like I need to make a decision, you know, can you guys let me off? Like what's going on? Like what, it was just kind of like, what do I need to do to like, convince you guys it wasn't really convince you guys it's just more of like can I go back and you know when I first got injured I did notice something on my piece of paper like this little my medical chart it was just like a danger to himself and to others like that's kind of like a big like that's a big big deal yeah so I think that I mean that was probably one of the reasons why they sent me to lunch tool after I initially got injured but that's you know they probably felt that I was no longer a danger to myself and others. And that's probably one of the reasons why they released me off of like limited duty and everything like that. But then as you guys know, it's kind of like that whole process of, you know, walking your happy butt, uh, you know, S1 be like, hi, my name's Corporal Peck. I would like to reenlist. Here's my paper. Please sign it. (laughs) And then walking over to the (laughs) battalion Sergeant major who you've never met before. Hello, Sergeant Major. I'm Corporal Peck. Sign my piece of paper. <laughs> it's, just, it's basically a whole bunch of that. It, that's really what it was. And that, that's really, I mean, that's really all it was, was just a whole bunch of, yeah. Sign my piece of paper? Yeah. Once <laughs> I was cleared off of like limited duty, it was just, yeah. It was just a whole bunch of that. So you, you uh, basically just did the legwork. There were, there was some pushback from my immediate command. Like, I can't remember if he was a lieutenant or a captain. He, he, he wasn't really too happy. He wasn't, he was like, you know, I really don't know much about you, but like, I can't remember his words exactly, but he's like, I don't remember too much about you, but like, all I know is that you've been on limited duty for like the last year and a half. Why should I sign your reenlistment papers? And I'm like, I don't. And my piece of paper. <laughs> I don't, I don't, don't like, ask me cr- don't ask me crazy questions just sign the paper <laughs> i'm a corporal you are running out of ncos like i i don't know piece of paper Fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you, you could yeah. even look away and and sign it yeah. and pretend like you didn't <laughs> like i'm like please like, hey, I was just going to occupational therapy. Just sign my piece of paper. Thank you and goodbye. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what it was. It was just, yeah, it was just a whole bunch of like, once the limited duty was up, it was just kind of like going around and that was basically it. <laughs> Nothing too much. Or it wasn't too much fun. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> The internet, like everything, made made it seem like you had to fight the whole military to like be able to go and reenlist. Yep. You know, it, Tooth the, and nail. the internet they over dramatize as per usual. Yep. Of course. 
Yeah. Because you, know, cause, you <laughs> know, Connie had to Connie had to do her research on you, and so she went and looked and. Uh, I do my research for every episode. Thank you. No, let's not. First off, let's not lie. It was Rietta stalking me again. Yes. A hundred percent. That's all she does with her time. She's like, let me just go stalk some people. (laughs) You know, most people just call that good friendship. But I mean, if you want to hate on me, okay. So I guess, I don't know. It's kind of a silly question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Since you fought so hard to re-enlist and go back, do you ever regret going back no nah, not really um there's only been a few times and it's only because there's been something else going on in my life that has kind of had an outside factor to it only there's only been yeah there's only been a few times that i've kind of been like i wish that i could go back and change it but not the reenlistment no because that would still put me Sorry, now you've got me thinking about time travel, which kind of puts me in the same conundrum. Ow. (laughs) Yeah, so the only thing that I could change is re-enlistment. But then if I didn't re-enlist, they would still be in that same position, which means somebody else would have gotten injured. Now, see, that's a good way to think of it. You know, you're not just thinking of yourself. You're thinking, well, if I didn't get injured, then somebody else would have. If it wasn't me, then somebody else would have gotten injured. And I know for a fact the other my the other dude with the minesweeper wouldn't have survived the IED because we me and my aide were actually talking about this earlier today. He actually asked me for the first time. He's been with me for a month. He actually asked me what happened. And I explained to him, like, because of my size and because of my height, my muscle mass, it most likely what saved me. And I explained to him, like, you take a person you take five pounds of fat out of a human body and you take five pounds of muscle and you'll see the size difference. And you can tell like five pounds of mass or five pounds of fat compared to five pounds of muscle. The mass is going to be different. The size is going to be different. Yeah. The density is different. Yeah. And everything's going to be different. That's probably what saved me is my, my, the, the fact that it was like in shape is what saved me. And the other guy that was doing the metal detecting, if he stepped in that spot, he wouldn't have survived. And I told, and he actually, he actually had survivor's guilt, not survivor's guilt, but he's, he felt something like that. Yeah. Because you got so hurt and he didn't. Yeah. So no, I don't, I don't regret it. I mean, it sucks, especially on snow days when, you know, they don't plow the street and shit. I'm sitting here with, you know, I won't say any male genitals in my hand or anything like that, but like, <laughs> you know, I mean, it but sucks when, <laughs> when shit like that is happening because it's kind of like, well, here I am in a wheelchair. It's not like I can just, you know, pick my foot up and stomp over the snow and, or like, you know, something like that. I mean, I do have bad days when that kind of shit happens, but move to a warmer climate. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> No, you know, that's even worse because us amputees, so our blood has less room to travel. Um, so we stay warm before it heads oh. back to our heart. So, oh, so warm that. weather would be worse. No, at we, least you'd we, be hot anyway. No, we do we do bad in heat. We do oh, really bad. That's, that's, that's actually that's you actually really win. fascinating. <laughs> yeah. That's actually really fascinating. So you actually see there there is a positive. You stay warmer. Hey, hello. Yeah, I'm I'm right now it's like 30 degrees and I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt and people are looking at me in New, Jer- uh, New Jersey and they're like what the fuck is he smoking like what's <laughs> up <laughs> everyone's like bundled up with like hats and scarves and all their masks like actual like Ugh. masks sorry and everyone's like where's your double mask I'm like I'm not wearing one that's what the answer was the answer was <laughs> like, <"Don't hear> <laughs> fucking psychos <laughs> be like, no i'm gonna i'm gonna tell them this be like i have a medical issue what, what's your medical issue my hands don't work <laughs> Just <be> like, <laughs> no no people look at me weird already because i'm like rolling around without like with a shirt and with basketball shorts on and that's fine yeah you do you 
Exactly. You do you, boo. Yeah, exactly. It's my yeah. favorite saying. Sorry. <laughs> it is her favorite saying. <laughs> but no, I don't regret it. I'd do it again. Wow. That's awesome. Because, like, I don't know a lot of people who have suffered so much who would be like, oh, if I could go back, I would. Most That's what most people who have any sort of, like, trauma would be like, no, I'd go back. So that's really, like, good positive thinking, I guess. I don't know what I'm thinking now. It's fine. Now there are just words coming out of my mouth. <laughs> mouth vomit. Yep, basically. That's you know, how I started a, a podcast. <laughs> and here we are. Though. It'd be great, though, if I had some, like, cybernetic legs. I wish. It'd be great. Elon Musk. Papa Musk. Where are you? Give me some goddamn cybernetic legs. That or you just need to, like, pop into Archer temporarily and have, like, Krieger set you up and then just pop back out. Right? God damn it. I'm tired of driving around in this damn minivan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. (laughs) Getting all these soccer moms looking at me like I'm like some like snack that they can munch on. But like, no, (laughs) I do not want to be driving this. That's great imagery. I love it. Soccer moms that are going to go snack on you. Be like, you see this? This is a handicap (laughs) placard. You see this? Oh, they see you. They're going to go and snack on you. (laughs) No. I'm only driving this because it's got that stupid ramp. Think I want to be driving this shit? No, I don't. No, you I, never I know. Maybe um, Musk will make it a uh, handicap accessible, like super cool Tesla. Yeah, I tried. You never know. Them. My very and only tweet was Elon Musk, please create a handicap accessible <laughs> Tesla. Please. <laughs> no response huh no response yeah mm-hmm. no response actually actually i what wait was it twitter i don't know maybe it was i don't know i did it on one of those facebook i don't know i can't remember it was a long here time it, ago. here it is we're putting it back on in the universe again not that he will ever listen to our podcast but elon musk if you are listening hey, you don't know don't limit our podcast like that so it's out in the universe again. He might hear it on our podcast and be like, oh, exactly. I got you, I got you Sergeant John Peck. I mean, he's Send working to your with house. Microsoft right. to freaking come up with the Halo Warthog truck. Like, Why? come on. No, it's from a video game. Yes. I know. I mean, I asked the question, but why? <laughs> exactly. Because it's going to sell because they know it's mm. going to sell. His truck didn't sell. Oh my god, oh, the truck was ugly as all get out. I never right? saw it, so I have no comment. It, mm. it, it looked like you took a sports car and then put a truck bed on it, but a really shitty looking sports car. Your son could draw a better truck. Yes. Okay. Anyone could draw a better truck. Good to know so okay what uh one last question this is a hard hitter right (laughs) Uh so what got you through the darkest hours of your life huh what what got you like through the darkest hours what helped you go to the upswing and start feeling better i don't know you know what i mean what you got you from it. not wanting to throw yourself down a set of stairs anymore yes exactly See, Rihanna's better at this than me. <laughs> lots and lots of meth. I don't. Wait, what? <laughs> don't lie. <laughs> no. I don't believe uh, you. So I had a nurse. He was kind of a, a big nerd. And uh, so at this time, I think Walking Dead was like on its second season or something like this. This is going to sound really stupid. Uh, he told me Walking I should be dead. Walk- Got yeah, you through this, I love it. <laughs> nah, so he was like, you know what, dude? Like, you don't have any visitors. And I was like, oh, well, that's fucking great. Like, cool, dude. Thanks. He's like, <laughs> he, no, he's he was being serious. He's like, you don't have any visitors. You're not really doing anything. Like, you're going down to the Matsy work, you know, like to work out. That's you know where us cripples go. And he's like, you know, you should watch this. Like, it's a really good show. And he's like, you could kind of relate to it though. 
<laughs> he's like, you know, this dude, Rick, is I forget how you say this word. I can almost smell it. The protagonist. Yeah, I did. Yes. Great. High five, John. High five. Yes, I just hit myself in the head with my own hand. I don't care. Uh, the protagonist, Rick, you know, wakes up in the hospital. You know, he thinks his wife and kid are all dead. And what the hell's going on with the world? Uh, munch, or these people are eating each other. Blah, blah, blah. You know, we all know, you know, zombies taking over. All hope dead you know whatever dude wants to kill himself blah blah blah, whatever and uh he's like you know maybe it's a good show for you to watch i'm like this is great and uh anyway so you know i start watching this this show and everything i'm not like drawing conclusions or anything you know drawing lines between myself and rick and everything like that i'm just like you know what like I, i think at this point i was like trying to like grasp at straws like i don't think like like I, I think like I was really trying to grasp at straws and it kind of like broke like a very, very, very small crack into like my like plant. And then from there, like one day, like I'm sitting, I think on the fifth floor where my room was and I'm looking out the window and I see like this triple amputee and where the hospital was, it was like on a main street. And I'm like, oh, this, he gets up from the bench and he starts walking towards the main street. And of course, dark, super dark, dark, dark John's like, oh, this dude's going to go throw himself in the street, right? Like <laughs> super dark John. Uh, nope. He starts walking and then this little girl comes up and grabs his hand. I'm like, oh, that's sweet. And then, you know, his wife or girlfriend grabs him, his other hand or his nub, whatever. And, um, I'm like, you know what? Screw this shit. This guy can get a family, you know, with, you know, if he's a triple amputee. And I was like, I can do that too. I was like, so what? Dude has a, a hand. That's cool. Whatever. Hands aren't everything. And, you know, from there, like, before all this, I wouldn't really talk to anybody. I wouldn't talk to any of the nurses. You know, they would come in and say, how's your day going? I'm going, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Just kind of grumble at them. Typical. Yeah. Yeah. And if any psychologist or uh, psychiatrist came in, I'd immediately scream at them and be like, get the fuck out of my room. Like, I, I still to this day hate any psychologist or psychiatrist. But yeah, after that, I think I kind of changed and I kind of like started to like open up and I started to talk to everybody. And like anybody that was like willing to listen, I just kind of started to inquire about their day and just kind of like, you know, just started to be like the next day I went to my physical therapy appointment. And just the very first time, I was just like, how's your day going? My therapist was like, who are you? (laughs) The fuck? And uh, yeah, from there, I just kind of like started like opening up a little bit more. Just kind of like started, you know, little tiny cracks into my plan. Just started to like, like kind of like break down my guard and everything like that. And I started to kind of like come out a little bit more and like start to crack jokes. And people are like a little surprised because they're like, wait, so underneath like your mean like personality, you went from like basically screaming at people, like telling people get the fuck out of your room, like telling people that you're going to like throw yourself down the flight stairs to you turned into this person that's like cracking jokes about your legless like nubs and like all this stupid shit that you do half the time. Like at one point I like stole a lab jacket and an ID badge. And I went, I think I went to the gyno clinic and told a female I'm there for her exam. Or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's oh my God. I would have laughed my ass off if I was that girl. Yeah. They don't find it funny. Oh, like, come the, on. Of, well, no the female, fun. the female did, but the nurses on the gyno did not did feel not. like it was funny. <laughs> no, no, no. Mm. But yeah, medical professionals. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, But yeah, so it was just, it was, I think it was just uh, basically just like all these little things that kind of led up to it. And just, but but like I said, though, it hasn't always been like sunshine, rainbows and unicorn poop and all that shit. Like it's, I mean, there have been dark, dark days and there still are. I mean, even to this day, like, um, I mean, I, I do have dark days still. And it's just, there are times where I'm just kind of like, what the hell am I doing? Um, that's why even when I talk to Rihanna, I'm like, what the fuck is going on with this foundation? So I'm like, Rihanna, what are we doing? Like, come on, 
Let's open. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, Rietta. Um, let's go. And I love your enthusiasm. And uh, actually, you're one of the reasons that like I haven't given up because I've had my moments with the foundation and I'm like, why is this not happening fast enough? Like, maybe I'm not meant to do this. I'm just fuck it. I'm done. And then like John will text me and be like, hey, how's it going? And I'm like, OK, he's one of the reasons I'm doing this. I am not quitting until this motherfucker is going. <laughs> Do you guys actually want to talk a little bit about the foundation since you've brought it up a couple of times and some of our listeners might not know? Well, we haven't like, it's not ready yet, but I mean, why it's not? It's getting there though. It's just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. John's that's making we, funny faces. That's what we all have to do. Um, It's basically, it is going to be a nonprofit dedicated to basically veterans and their family because when John and I talked, he told me about a lot of holes that were in the system that really need to be fixed. And one of my biggest desires is, you know, being a part of this military community for over 11 years now, uh, we've lost a lot of friends to suicide. And um, I just, and I know John feels the same way. We don't want to see it anymore. So we're taking a step to create a community where veterans can re- can reconnect and restore that camaraderie. And hopefully it'll help come and combat the suicide rates. And then we're just going to be more, get, offer more support to the families. John's got a brilliant idea of connecting um, vets with troubled youth. So, I mean, we've got a lot of amazing programs that are going to be offered that we hope will help fill in the gaps where stuff is lacking. And John, whatever you want to add to that, because I'm not always the most gracious. So uh, like Rietta said, like one of the things that we also believe in is like, when you leave the military, you've always had a very structured life. It's always been be here at this time, do this. It's always been like that. It's always like, this is what you're supposed to do at this time. Eat shit, go shoot at this. You're done. All right. And when you leave the military, you no longer have that structure. You kind of lose your purpose. I mean, and then those are the guys who fall through the cracks. That's, that's kind of the problem. And then those are the guys that fall through the cracks and they don't really know what they're doing. Um, yeah. And either they, they, they fail to adapt, and then those are the, usually the ones who, unfortunately, end up pulling the trigger, stepping off the ledge, or whatnot. Throwing yourself um, down five flights of stairs. Yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness um, that didn't happen, or else we wouldn't be here right now. Yeah. So, I mean, when I was growing up, I was part of, uh, what was it, the Little Brother program? Oh, yeah. Big Brothers. Yeah, Big, Big Brothers. Brother program. I knew what you meant. (laughs) Yeah. So like I live in, I live in New Jersey right now. And like, so one of the thing is, is like every year I help like families with like uh, Christmas gifts. And it's always like families that are struggling. I mean, this year it kind of broke my heart, broke my heart because like I got a list from father, not a father, but an actual like priest father. And he gave me a list and it was ridiculous, not ridiculous as in like, the amount of people it was ridiculous as in like not the amount of people it wasn't ridiculous as the gifts it was ridiculous because the gifts were so humble what Aww. i mean by that they were very like they just wanted hats hats and scarves like a lot of them just want hats and scarves i'm like i'm not doing that so i remember growing up with like the big brother program and like here in new jersey like this would be the perfect spot to kind of like help with this so we could start it here or start it you know somewhere that we could find and we would have to go like kind of to the police department somewhere like that where we can reach out to these kids that are you know uh, sorry my phone just did a notification oh gaming stuff um at risk teens because I, at one point I was at risk not at risk but like I was in juvenile delinquent center and blah 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 did stupid shit when I was young too <laughs> so basically we were thinking that we can you know say we have a guy who has a passion for let's just use me as an example we have a guy who is, has a passion for uh cooking we could kind of team him up with a kid who's possibly thinking about doing a culinary degree or something like that kind of team them up with something like that using the nonprofit, we can fund them like maybe a culinary class at like Sir La Table or like a, like a teaching, like a some kind of class or something like that. And it kind of gives not only it's, it not only gives that military person a purpose, 
but it also gives that trouble troubled teen kind of like some guidance it also helps that troubled teen like hey you know gives them somebody to look up to a positive positive influence Mm -hmm. so there's like different things that we have to do and different things that we have to also implement to make sure like the military person that we uh, line them up with is you know an upstanding person that they're not going to be doing anything that they shouldn't be doing if that makes sense with a teen yeah who's already at risk for sure yeah that yeah like we don't want like there's i mean you're not gonna believe this but there was a there was a double amputee who was supposed to get a house and we all have to you know these these home building foundations but like he was supposed to get a house and each one of us go through like a background search and they went through his background come to find out he had multiple arrests for penetrating penetrating a youth with a foreign object Oof. and like oh yeah and they're like no 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 so these Sorry, are things that we can't do this now <laughs> yeah so these are things that we need to like implement we also don't yeah. want to have like somebody who's just all of a sudden gonna flip on a kid the minute that they're having like an a, issue a bad day or like mm-hmm. they're having like I want this kid to be like, Hey man, I'm having a bad day. Like, can you call me? Like, can I call you up and talk to you about it or something like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. Yeah. That's so it. we're, we're, we're battle buds. That's the name of our organization. Oh, and, I uh, like it. Well, well. So this is how to deal when shit gets real. Uh, check us out on all the social medias and stuff. Uh, we'll be posting little clips on YouTube now and uh, new episodes every Friday. And don't forget to buy John's book, Rebuilding Sergeant Peck. It is an amazing A porno guide. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, that might make people want it even more. So, you Maybe. know, make sure you check Maybe. it out. And, and thanks, guys, for listening. <laughs>